In part one of this series, we discussed what information needs to be obtained to assess for a malfunctioning tracheostomy. Next, let's talk about next steps in management. For an occluded tube, try removing the inner cannula to see if the patient can be ventilated. If not, then consider suctioning through the tracheostomy tube. If the suction catheter tube does not advance beyond the end of the tracheostomy, the tip may be pressed against the tracheal wall or occluded by an overinflated cuff. The tracheostomy may also have become displaced and positioned in the subcutaneous tissue. If providing positive pressure, this could lead to subcutaneous emphysema, pneumothorax, or pneumomediastinum. If there is concern that the tracheostomy is in the subcutaneous tissue and the patient is not ventilating, remove the tube and try ventilating the patient orally while occluding the stoma or through the stoma itself. If mask ventilation is inadequate, consider oral intubation, intubation through the tracheostomy stoma, or replacing the tracheostomy tube itself. One thing to consider is that a fresh tracheostomy, which for a surgical tracheostomy is less than four days or for a percutaneous tracheostomy between seven to 10 days, there may be a risk of inadvertently advancing the tube into the subcutaneous tissue. Patients who have a tracheostomy should have bedside signs like these readily available for reference in case of complications. Stay tuned for part three of this series where we will discuss special considerations for patients with laryngectomies. And don't forget to go to the June 2025 APSF newsletter to learn more.